Before we start working with this data and building our classifiers, um, we can have a look at the data uh, because all those data are two-dimensional points. Actually, we can draw those data on screen and have a, a feeling of how the um, distribution of the two classes look like. To draw the data in the notebook, we would like to um, establish the graphic environment that is uh, um, realized by using this magic command. Note all those commands start with this uh, percentage simple. Our commands belong to the uh, 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 interactive Python that is not part of the Python language, but it's uh, just uh, um, to fa facilitate our experiment. And uh, to actually perform the um, uh, uh, graphic functions, we need uh, a library called matplotlib. In this library, we have this uh, py plot uh, sub, uh, sub package imported as we call it plt if we execute this command well you see this message that means the graphic uh, environment has been set up on your computer mm. let's do do a plot by generate a scatter plot of our data samples. Let first um, set up our canvas. Canvas is uh, consists of uh, a figure. A figure is um, just a window of your computer, and the axis are subplots of the window on which we can actually draw the object. This command create a, a window and create a number of uh, canvas on this window. In this example, we just need one canvas. So, after create this here, after execute this here, we look. Uh, we can see that uh, a window pop up with a canvas setup ready for us. It's here. Okay. Uh, let us put this window here. Squeeze this a little bit. Right. Okay. The plotting command is actually function provided by the canvas. In this case, the canvas is this AX object. Then let AX do a scatter plot. The scatter plot basically accept the X coordinate and uh, the Y coordinate of a set of points. Remember that our data is n by 2 matrix. The first column are the X coordinate and the second are the y. So let's say um, use column to represent all element in in the referring uh, uh, dimension and uh, that means all the element in the first column and that is the x coordinate and we can use this also to take the y coordinate. Okay. If let us execute this cell. Wow, that is our data here. But we cannot see the two classes of the data. We can just see well. There is uh, um, more or less a ring here, and there is a cluster in the middle. Um, to clearly sh clearly sh let's show the two classes, we may want to use different colors for these two classes of uh, points.
can provide the color value C. Let the color to be equal to the uh, label Y. That is 0 or 1. Well, there it's not very obvious. One class is drawn in blue and the other is in red. We may want to use uh, more distinguishable colors. Let's uh, set, uh, set the color map. There are multiple color maps in meta uh, in this package. Uh, what we use here is called summer. I just choose this color map because it happens to look pretty on screen. Have a look. Well, this is uh, more clear. We have two classes of uh, uh, points. The ring of uh, the, uh, the, the the ring means that the, the th points belongs to class with label one, and in the center there are um, points belong to the class zero. And note that the those those uh, points in the center follows a uh, distribu normal distribution. This is a two-dimensional normal distribution with which are centered at the, at the origin zero and zero. That is its center, and with the uh, standard variance of zero point one five. Okay. Um, and notice our canvas has automatically been uh, stretched, been zoomed out a little bit for us. Now the lower limit of x and the y axis are um, negative 0 0.8 and the upper limit is 0 0.8. Sometimes we would like to control specifically how those two um, limits and we can Add it here. Let's just put it here. X dot set x limit. We give it a pair of numbers. Perhaps now minus one to plus one is a good choice. And x dot set y limit. Uh, let it to be minus one to positive one. Exact. Uh, before we exactly that, we uh, let us uh, consider a little bit closer what a color map is. A color map actually um, maps a series, a range of values into a series of colors so that those values can be distinguishable in the plotted uh, uh, data. In our case, the values are 0 and 1 in this particular data set. Uh, however, in an experiment, we may need to draw multiple data sets or manipulate the data sets. And uh, the smallest and the largest value in the um, intermediate data may change from one set to another. Uh, if that is the case, uh, the mapping from the values to the colors may change accordingly. Uh, you see that the um, a graphic tool, uh, the graphic tool automatically um, do the nice job of uh, um, giving all the values some distinguishable color. But that behavior may not be wanted because uh, we would like uh, all the um, uh, data sets or the intermediate data sets in an experiment to be drawn with some consistency. In this case, we may want to specify um, the uh, range of the values for the color map. We may would like to specify to this color map that the smallest possible value in this uh, uh, color values, that means the y values is 0, called value min equals 0, and the maximum possible value is uh, 1, so that gives, um, that, that makes the certain that or which colors we need, we will give to each of the points. Otherwise, the colors may be automatically scaled to 
uh, fit the range of values in 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 the um, uh, variables that is given to this uh, color specification. Okay. Uh, finally, we may want to specify the size of those dots that represent our data points. We will later use the size to represent the width of uh, uh, the data point, uh, the training data. To specify the size, we need a parameter called s. S um, can be specified in two ways. In one way, we can give a constant number, a single number that works for e uh, all of the points on the plot. And uh, on the other hand, we may choose to give a, a vector and uh, there are equal numbers of elements in that vector as the number of points to be drawn. Um, that means we specify the specific size for each of the points. Uh, here, um, for the initial uh, visualizing of the data, we just uh, use a constant size for all of the points. And uh, note that the size is specified by the area. So if uh, we use 64 here, actually we specify the point with a size of approximately 8. The next step um, to, pro to build an Ada boost, we need uh, a set of uh, um, basic and weak learners. For those learners, uh, we, we will employ extremely uh, simple ones in this case. All those, um, all those simple weak classifiers will separate the two-dimensional plane from zero to uh, minus one to plus one using horizontal or vertical lines. A weak classifier will separate the two classes used by drawing such a line or drawing lines like this. To implement the weak classifier, we need to define functions. In Python, function definition uh, works in this way, like define some function that is the full. Some function will take input, for example, some A, and it can be as simple as uh, print hello A. Okay, let's say full. Word. If we execute this part of code, we will have an error. Well, foo isn't defined. That is because we haven't actually defined the function, uh, execute the definition of the function. We just write it here. In notebook, we need actually to execute the definition cell of a function to have this function ready in the memory and uh, uh, to serve the subsequent calling. See if we execute this function here. Now it's ready. Let's do this again. Okay. That works as expected. For the um, weak classifiers, let's call the function of this classifier to be simple card because it uh, cards um, the data space using just the vertical or horizontal uh, boundaries. The simple card function needs three pieces of information to um, classify its uh, input x, that is the data. The three pieces of, of information includes um, first, of course, we need to determine uh, should it to cut uh, x using horizontal, uh, horizontally or vertically. And uh, then if uh, we decide to cut it in some way using that mode um, uh, argument, we need also to determine at uh, which point to cut the line. 
and the z point needs to be from minus one to uh, plus one. That fits the distribution of our data in this experiment. And the third piece of information um, needs a, a little bit more explanation. Remember that in our data, the, the label of the data um, are of two classes, 0 and 1. So given a way of cutting the data space and a threshold at which to cut, actually we have uh, two uh, choices on how to cut the data into two classes specifically. For example, if we choose to cut the data uh, space into a left part and a right part at some, uh, uh, some point, Actually, we can mm, choose to call the left part to be class 0 and the right part to be class 1. Or alternatively, we can choose to call the left part class 1 and the right part class 0. To implement the cut, that shouldn't be very difficult, but uh, a good habit to uh, consider a function is uh, first to determine its input and uh, output, and and then later just uh, just when this input and the output interface has been completely determined, um, when then concentrate on the implementation internal implementation of the function, and the output of the function is of course its predicted value for each of the symbols in X. The return value of the function should be some prediction. Um, y and this y should has um, have uh, the same number of elements as the rows in x. Okay, to implement the function, um, we first have a look of uh, which mode it is uh, supposed to be working to cut the plan horizontally or vertically. So if mode in Python, to compare uh, to compare to string, one can simply use this uh, double equal symbol. In fact, this is double equal symbol can be used to, to compare any kind any kind of two objects. Uh, horizontal. If we want to cut the plan horizontally, and if Flip is uh, true. We are consider the determination will be based on the x coordinate of this capital X. The x coordinate of this capital X data is the first column of this capital X. And if this capital uh, is the first column of the capital X greater than the threshold. Okay, that is the classification rule. Uh, in NAPI, the result of the comparison would be some um, binary values. To convert those binary values into 0 and 1, we will use as type function of the result of the comparison into the type is called pfloat numbers. Let's have a look at how this may work. For example, let a to be nappy dot uh, is nappy array and let it to be 0, um, 1, 2. Let us have a look at what is the comparison of A is greater than 0 0.5. OK, false, true, and true as expected. To convert these binary values into um, 0 and 1 on which we can perform computations. We can call this as t 
type nappy.float. If we print this result, we would have 0, 1, and 1. So that is how the uh, simple classifier will work. Let what equals this. And of course, if we have another case of the flip value, we would uh, change the condition to be the opposite. Okay. And if the mode is uh, vertical, AL if means else if. That means if mode is not horizontal, else, then we uh, compare if mode is uh, vertical. Okay. We can copy this piece of code here and uh, based on uh, based over classification use the y coordinate uh, to further simplify our task instead of uh, train those uh, simple classifiers we would like to have a finite number of uh, um, those uh, fixed simple classifiers. That means have all those parameters of the well, weak classifier determined in uh, and collect a set of such determined classifiers. And then each round of AdaBoost we will choose from this fixed set of the classifiers instead of training one. Right? Um, to build a set, a set of classifiers let us first have a look at the concept of list in Python. A list in Python is, uh, as we have already seen, that um, very simple. Just um, the some a number of objects within a pair of square uh, braces, braces, and such as this is a list. If uh, we print list one, nothing surprising. And, and here, what we would like to do is to have uh, a complete list of all possible um, value of uh, those uh, weak classifier specific specifying parameters, such as list one equals uh, a number of parameters that is uh, horizontal and uh, let the threshold to be, to be 0 0.15 perhaps and let the flips to be true this is one possible uh, this is um, the parameter of one possible weak classifier of course, we can have uh, the parameter of another. Let that to be vertical class, uh, vertical, vertical <coughs> separation. Maybe that is uh, separate at uh, minus two point uh, zero point two five, and the flip can be false. So on, so false. But how to um, exhaust in a range of uh, those uh, parameters? We can see that there is uh, not much to do to the first and the third parameters because uh, all the possible values um, for those parameters are two, horizontal or vertical, true or false. But there can be a lot of uh, um, possible values actually in, in the um, in theoretical case, there can be infinite number of the choices of the threshold. To have a finite collection of uh, uh, candidate hypotheses or candidate weak classifiers, we need a way to list uh, 
reasonable or appropriate choices of those parameter combinations and put them in a list for select by the adapt algorithm. For example, let the list name to be H represent the capital H hypothesis space. It is initialized with an empty list. Okay, and we can do the for loop for mood in two possible values. Okay, horizontal or vertical. Do a inner for loop for um, threshold. Perhaps a good way, um, a good range of the threshold is to be from minus one to positive one, and with uh, some uh, step size. To build a list of numbers, we can use the function of a range in NAPI. This function works in this way. Let's have a look. NAPI dot uh, range. Let it to be start from minus zero and end with minus zero point five. Let the step size to be zero point one. Uh, we see the function built a list starting from the uh, start value and end with uh, one step short to the end value with the specified step size, which in this case to be 0 0.1. So to have a set of uh, a reasonable threshold to cut the data space, start from 0, uh, there, minus 0 0.95 to positive 1, with uh, perhaps increase Step size to be 0 0.05, okay. and of course for the flip, we have two possible values: true or false. Now we can build h by in each of the uh, innermost uh, loop. Let us give h an append of uh, those parameters m, th, and f. Let's run this code and uh, examine what h look like. h0, let's have a look at h1. Right. Uh, note that there is some numerical inaccuracy, but it's really, it doesn't really matter. And in this uh, very first two element, it uh, loops over those flat, uh, flip value, uh, flip. Uh, here we build our parameter list. Uh, but however, I want to introduce an alternative way to build the same list in a, a more personalized way. Python allows one to build list uh, use a more natural syntax, which is not only more uh, make the code more concise, but also allows one to consider the um, the problem of uh, design in a more natural way. In Python, we can create a list using this pair of uh, square and bracket and. Uh, we first consider the form in which the element of this list will take. Uh, one individual element is, uh, of course, has three pieces of information using which we call the simple classifier. Tuple of M, TH, and F. Uh, in case you wonder what a tuple is, you may well just consider a tuple is kind of a list. But uh, uh, 
as opposed to a list which allows you to group its content and dynamically, a tuple has after construction. A tuple has a fixed number of elements. Um, this limit allows the computer to do some op optimization of its implementation, but uh, um, such subtle difference uh, doesn't really matter for our purpose here. We just uh, use a tuple of three elements to um, represent the calling arguments for the simple classifier. The next question is, of course, where do we get these uh, uh, three pieces of information? This uh, M, uh, TH, and F. We specify them by writing for this M and TH and F in some collection. And uh, uh, where do we have this some collection? Of course, uh, that collection should uh, have the same construction as if we run this nested for loop as above. Of course, we do not use nested for loop to uh, construct this uh, collection, otherwise there is no point to uh, use uh, another way to write this uh, uh, list construction. Here we introduce another two. The that two is actually from iteration tools. Product Okay, and let's make this uh, move this cell up by clicking here right. Okay, let's execute here A product actually build uh, a list from uh, two or multiple list by ex uh, exhausting all the combinations of this two list. Let's have a look at an example. If uh, list one has two elements, one is letter A and the other is letter B, and let list two has uh, three numbers one, two, three, then have a look at uh, what is the product of um, list 1 and list B, uh, 2. Okay, that is uh, a terrible object. That means uh, uh, that is an object uh, its potential to give us all its uh, elements as long as if we ask, ask it for. Of course, we can ask it by um, using the syntax we will use uh, below. Okay, let uh, two element to be element one, element two, four element one and element two in this product. Okay, let's print this list. Well, we see the function product gives us all the com possible combinations of the elements in this two list. Okay, now what we need is the product horizontal and vertical. The second piece, the second list to exhaust is uh, NAPI. Uh, arrange okay. okay for the third piece the flip we need it to be in true or false okay now we build our H again using this syntax you may want to check how the H the Weak classifiers in the H works. Um, let's use one of such H to do a prediction. C 
say if I write this piece of code here of course that is used the fifth hypothesis in the weak classifier uh, collection that is uh, H5 uh, actually it is 6 because the uh, uh, index 5 rem uh, represents the 6th element in H and uh, we take the first parameter, second parameter and third parameter give it to this simple cut well, an error. Let's still visit. It complains that the simple cut function hasn't been defined. Um, that is because um, this error we have encountered previously. That is because although we have um, uh, written out the instructions for that function, we hasn't executed the definition cell. Let's do it now. Well, another error. This time it complains that in line 5 there is invalid uh, syntax. So when an error gives you a line number, we can have a look at this line number in a cell. If we want to have a look at the line number, we can uh, click this escape key to enter the command mode and hit L, means line number. So now we can see the number of the lines and check the fifth line. Of course, uh, we mistakenly written the condition following else, which shouldn't be the case. Okay, we have our with classifier, uh, with classifiers defined here, and we can redo this prediction piece. Right. Um, record that. Previously, we can draw the um, data points on this canvas and uh, we can color those data points according to their true labels. Now we can draw the data points again and color them using the predictions given by uh, this hypothesis or the, this weak classifier. Okay, um, let's copy this uh, drawing code here. And uh, what we need to change is this part. What we want to mean is to uh, color those data samples according to what is the prediction of uh, uh, that with classifier. Let's have a look. What do we have? Oh! All are classified into um, zero. Let's have a look at what is uh, this classifier. It is not very surprising um, because if we have a look at here the separation line is uh, drawn at uh, zero, uh, minus 0 0.85. Uh, 0 0.85, the line is cut about here, this part. And of course, uh, you classify all the samples into one color. Uh, you may want to have a look at uh, um, different uh, uh, with classifiers, what we can do is we can uh, set up a set of uh, canvases on this simple, uh, on this uh, one figure. Let us say fig.axis. We can instruct the subplot function to give us uh, uh, three rows and five columns. Of uh, 15 canvases in one window. So for hypothesis and the axis in zip, the hypothesis and the axis.
Well, to understand this piece of code, uh, there are two new elements here. One is zip. In Python, zip just put two um, list one along another, and in each iteration in this in, it will take one element from each of uh, this uh, list within this zip until it reaches the shortest list. Let's have a look at uh, for a b. Uh, sorry, maybe a underscore b underscore in zip. Let's have a two list. Zero, one, two, three. And the second the list let to B A B and C. And in each of the iteration let us just print A and B. Have a look. Well, look, these two lists are put along uh, with each other. And in the first iteration, the first element of the list, the first list and the first element of the second list are extracted, given to these two variables a and b, and they are printed here. And in the second iteration, this two, the second element of each list are extracted, and given these two uh, the loop variables. And are executed and are uh, used in this uh, loop body, and then in the third iteration, the third element are taken out. But after the third iteration, the second list has been exhausted, so the loop stops here, and uh, the fourth element in the first list uh, ended up with not being used. Okay, uh, actually here what we do is to create a number of uh, canvases, that is uh, 15 of them. And in the 15 canvases are organized into three rows and five columns. We would like to iterate in each of the canvas and each of the hypotheses. That means uh, a weak classifier. And in that canvas to draw the performance, uh, the effect of the classifier on the data set. Of course, we have uh, many more classifiers than the 15 canvases. So we use this zip to take each element of, uh, 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 take one element from each list until we exhausted one list. That is a uh, uh, canvas list, of course. This flatten means we would like to convert the two-dimensional array of, uh, now it's not an array of uh, numbers, but an array of canvases into a one-dimensional array that is a list of the canvases. Okay, and uh, for each of uh, this uh, weight classifier and the canvas, we can repeat what we have done uh, above. Let uh, to have the simple prediction. No, it's not five, just to call it a simple prediction. Let's pick equals simple cut. Give give the x to this simple card. And we should write here h0, h1, and h2. But there is a simple way to expand all the elements in the tuple or list into uh, the argument function argument correspondingly. That is, we use the star symbol here, star h. This way, we would uh, to take element in the weak classifier parameter list, give it to the a loop variable h and uh, expand this h into three pieces of uh, uh, parameters to the simple cut mm, we classifier and get this prediction. Then, well, perhaps we let the 
loop variable to be ax instead of a, we then can reuse this piece of code, that to be ax, and uh, let uh, the coloring scheme to be given by the uh, sp. SP is here the prediction of the weak classifier. The, of course, we need to make sure the indentation is correct. Now let's execute this piece of code. Well, it looks uh, all the uh, first uh, 15 classifiers classify all the um, points into one class or the other which doesn't give us uh, very much uh, impression of how this uh, with classifiers works. Um, what we do? Well, perhaps we randomly choose a number of uh, those uh, um, classifiers from the, the collection. Here is what we do. H hypothesis index. Remember our random generator? It can also generate an integers. Let uh, it generate integers um, from 0 to the length of uh, hypothesis set. That means the up limit of the integer to be generated and the up limit is exclusive so the, there won't be uh, an integer to be generated equal to length of h only to be a minus uh, length h minus 1. Okay, let it generate a hundred of them and now we can have index of h in zip hyper index okay uh, this time the loop is over this randomly generated index and uh, give to this loop variable that is hi we need to take the hi weak classifier from the uh, collection of weak classifiers also uh, what we have seen is uh, that the, the there's uh, numbers of those ticks on the two axes are squeezed too much in the drawing. We may like to remove those ticks because we know that all those are from minus zero to um, positive, uh, minus one to positive one. That is uh, realized by set the x ticks and y ticks to be empty. Let's try this again. Well, those are interesting mm, cuttings. Also, we can give uh, those drawings a title to show um, the mode, the threshold, and uh, the flip status. This piece of uh, code generates a string and that string is to be put on the title. That is called string formatting. In Python, uh, string formatting follows the convention in the C language and the C++. Um, that is, let's have a look. Simple example. A character lead, lead by um, percentage symbol means some 
special placeholder in the string. This percentage D means an integer. A uh, percentage C means a character, and a percentage F means a flute number. This dot two means uh, um, print this flute number and keep only two digits after the uh, decimal point. For the rest of the string, they are literal. Okay. To provide the information for those placeholders in the string, we need to add another uh, percentage symbol followed by a list or a tuple. And the list of tuple lists all the elements there. For example, let's the integer to be 5 plus 4. And um, let the character to be uh, 8, perhaps. And uh, let the uh, uh, fruit number to be the pi. If this is the case, right, look, we may have uh, five digits of pi to be printed out. Okay, here means we use the first character of the first parameter to represent the vertical horizontal cutting and uh, we pr print the threshold with a precision of two digits and uh, also give uh, a zero one representation of whether we will flip the classification or not. Okay, let's uh, try it again. Sorry. Oh, we mistyped it. Uh, the last A should be AX for the converse. Okay. Here are some of the uh, hypotheses or weak classifiers we will use to build our AdaBoost algorithm.